God still reigns, amen? Uh, actually, he never stopped reigning, amen? Uh, I hear some people say that he still, which we just sang that song, but how many know that he never stopped reigning, amen? He still reigns. Um, I thank God for the ensemble um, leading us this morning. Uh, the, past, the past few weeks, um, the Lord has placed on my spirit when I share the word of God to, to just talk about love and talk about compassion and talk about the Great Commission. Amen. Um, many of us during this pandemic, we got so used to not really witnessing or when we get a chance, we witness to each other, but we fail to witness outside the church to those in lines and those on our jobs or wherever it may be. And that's why I was led to uh, Mark 2 last week when we shared how the four gentlemen got their uh, friend to the, to the feet of Jesus, amen? And I believe in the future, that's what God wants us to do. We, he wants us to get our friends or those who we know to Jesus, not to a church, not to a bishop, not to an apostle, but to the church of Jesus Christ, to, at, to the feet of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen? And when we do that, we're going to have great outcome. As we found out last week, that we have never seen anything like this. The gentleman quoted after Jesus healed the gentleman. Um, and I asked, uh, I did receive an e a email or a Facebook post from some, someone, and they asked me, you know, you forgot to say, um, uh, go and sin no more. And I began to ponder and said, well, I don't remember reading that in this particular scripture that we were sharing last week. God does tell us to go and sin no more. But I understand that now we are on TV or broadcasting that we're going to get these critiques. Yeah. And, uh, and I thought I messed up. And I was about to send an email until I read the scripture and said, oh, that was not in this particular scripture that we were referring to last week. Amen. So this week, we're going to continue on in that theme of, of working. How many know that we are vessels for God? Amen. And so we're going to, next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about being vessels ready to be used by God. Uh, today we're going to start with 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verses 19 through 21 on today. And for the next couple of weeks, as stated, we're going to be talking about vessels ready to be used by God. In uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses starting at verse 19, it reads this way. Nevertheless, the foundations of God stand of sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and met for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Amen? Are you ready to be used by God? Dear Lord, we thank you for this word on today. We pray that something will be said once again to encourage all of our hearts. We continue to lift up our overseer and pastor in their absence on today. We continue to pray for their strength, their encouragement, and their peace right now, God. And we pray for their strength that is strengthening both of them and their children and grandchildren at this time. Once again, Lord, I decrease that you may increase. And we pray that something will be said through your word, not my word, but your word, that would encourage our hearts to continue following after you and to win as many as possible to the kingdom of God. And once again, Lord, bring them to our viewing. Bring them to our areas, bring them to our jobs, our, our workplace, wherever it may be, God, bring those who need salvation in front of us. Give us opportunities to share your word. We thank you for this word. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, you may be seated. And as stated, uh, uh, here, Apostle Paul is uh, talking to a spiritual son, and he's given him a picture, amen, a word picture of what he wanted to share with him. And this word picture was that of a large house with many utensils, amen? And in this master's house, in the master's house, the master's house is representing, amen, the church of God, amen? And that's why he called it large. And when I'm in my study of this, this really uh, blessed me because I said, well, God, you can use a small house, medium-sized house, or whatever size house you want. 
And the Lord says that I was missing it. I felt it in my spirit that that's what the Holy Spirit was saying. You were missing it. Because he's talking about here the large churches representing or large houses representing the kingdom of God. The churches worldwide. It's just not a house in Sickleville. It's just not the house in Williamstown or house across the street or house across there. But it's churches all around the world. And in this house, this large house, um, he was Timothy, Paul was sharing with Timothy was this. That there are many utensils. Some are made with gold, some are made with silver, and some are made of wood. Some to honor and some to dishonor. But he was saying to Timothy that I need you to be in a position, amen, that you could be used for my glory. Not just for his glory, but the glory of the, our God in heaven. And, 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 and what I was learning about this is that the master is in control of everything. We're not in control. You know, we think we're in control, but we're really not. The Holy Spirit's supposed to be in control of every church. Jesus Christ is the Lord. Uh, we're following him. So if we all are on the same page and following the, the master's plan for us, then we can be what, was, what is called utensils, for, ready and fit for the master's use, right? And when we refer to utensils, you know, as stated, you know, in a large house, many have gold, silver, they got plated this, plated that, or in, actually in a large house, many, there's not plate it, but it's real. Amen. It's real silver, real gold. And they only bring it out uh, for guests that, that, that they felt appropriate for. If you was not that special, they would just bring out the, the standard um, paper plates and paper forks. But if you were a special guest, <laughs> amen, you might get a plate. Amen. And, and Jesus, in this scripture, what he was sharing to, through his son was simply this. Amen. That in his large church, there are utensils. There are people. And in the large church, amen, the, the, uh, the saints here represent, amen, our union with Christ. It denotes our faith in Christ. And it denotes our discipleship in the things of God. And it also lets us know that we as Christians are vessels, amen. And we must emphasize this truth that the Lord of the house wants to use us for his purposes. Amen. How many of you all want to be used for God's purpose? Amen. I don't want to be that utensil that only comes out on special occasions. Amen. And that's how sometimes uh, people feel when they come to a church. Amen. Where they get neglected because they're looking for a special guest or looking for someone to come in dressed a certain way, looking for someone to come giving a certain way. But God wants us to treat everybody the same. No matter what walk of life they find themselves in, we're to love and to care for all those who come into our uh, presence. Amen? And, and, and God wants us to emphasize that we all are vessels. Some going, as we're going to find out, some are great, some are small, some are mighty, some are noble, some are influential. But God wants to use all of us for his glory. And, and, and when you think about it, uh, I was thinking how, you know, in sports, you have what we call specialists. And if you had basketball, you know, we had a specialist person that could shoot. Or in football, you had a specialist that could throw a football or catch a football or whatever it may be. But that was their spe special talent or gift outside of that they could do nothing. Amen? But how many know that in God's hands, amen, with God working in us, there is what, what you know, uh, 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 you only can do this. Amen? We all are called to witness. We all are called to, called to share the word of God. We all are called to lay hands on the sick and they should recover. We all are called to go to the hospitals and byways to, to win as many people to Christ as possible. We all are called. It's not just a job for a minister or elder a deacon or, or some lay person that's in charge of outreach ministry. No, we all are vessels at God's disposal ready to be used for his glory. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Acts 9 and 15. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power of God, I'm sorry, the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. And I love that to both of these scriptures, once again, in Acts, Paul 
uh, was writing here, and he was saying, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, Acts 9.15. Now this is re referring to Apostle Paul, where he had a special assignment, where God was placing him to go to not only his own people, but go to the Gentiles, go to the kings. And he says that, look, um, but the Lord said unto him, go, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel. How many of us know that we're chosen? We're chosen. And once again, in 2 Corinthians 4 and 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not from us. So once again, as I stated, that whatever we do for God is not us. And we're not doing it for us. Amen. But we're doing it for the excellency of our God in heaven. Amen. And we want to go above and beyond because we want to be that utensil ready to be used by God at any moment. Once again, utensils that I'm referring to in this large house is the church of, of God. Not just here in Sickleville, but you, how many know that we're just not members of Sickleville, of this church, Restoration. You're members on paper, and this is where you chose the fellowship, but our fellowship is in heaven. Our fellowship is in the church of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the church that we have acknowledged and said that we want to be a part of. Down here, this church is where we come to fellowship, get fed, get discipled, to go out and win souls. But our main church, or as they would say, the, 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 uh, the head church is that in heaven. And that's who we said we, that's who we, who we are representing in the earth. Amen? So as we move on, I want to talk more about the vessels. Vessels are there in order that they may be used. How many of us know that we have vessels in our houses that are there to be used? I don't know anybody who has paper plates or regular plates or forks or knives or however you put it that are there just for show. Amen? When you eat, you grab a plate. When you put trash in a trash can, you're using a utensil. You're putting it in trash or the trash can. That can is there for disposable items. Your, 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 your vases that you may have your pretty flowers in or, or your nice carpet, your nice hardwood floors, all that stuff is in place. But how many know that it would be a crime if, they would not, if you couldn't use them? You know, if you had beautiful floors and you don't walk on them, what, what, good, what, what are they going to do for you? Amen? Uh, I've been in houses, even my home, <laughs> where you don't go in that room. Or, you know, go over here. But how many know that in God's house, what he's saying is that, that, that he wants every vessel to be used for his glory. Utensils, once again, in a large house, whether they belong in a kitchen or in a dining room, whether they are vessels of gold, silver, or wood, or clay, they are there to be used. Christians are in the church for the same purpose. We are to save and win as many people to God as possible. We are to serve. Yeah. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, glory to God, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2 and 10. For we are workmanship. We are his workmanship. It's not our workmanship, but it's God's workmanship. Amen? We were created in, in, in Jesus Christ unto good works. Not bad works, not sad works, but good works for his kingdom, which before God has already ordained that we should walk in them. So we're just catching up once again to what God has ordained and orchestrated for our lives. Once we start winning souls, once we start working in his kingdom, he has already ordained and pre-ordered that that's going to be part of our lives. It's up to us once again to go back to the song, to us to say yes to his will. Once we say yes to his will, all of a sudden we are now being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And when you become the image of Jesus Christ, all of a sudden souls are important. All of a sudden, you know, lives, people walk across your path, friends, neighbors, whoever it may be, are important now because now you're looking at them with the eyes of Jesus. You're not looking at them because they're your neighbor, just your neighbor, or just your uncle, just your dad. But now you're looking at them with the eyes of God because we have some preordained work that has to be done. And what I mean by that is that we got some uncles that need to be saved. We got some aunts, some mothers, some fathers, some neighbors, some workplace buddies, workplace friends, amen, that need Jesus Christ. 
So we have been, once again, created, amen, for Christ Jesus unto good works. So that's something that we should be excited about because we have been created to do good things for the kingdom. The Lord calls us not only to come to him. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. But also to go for him. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 28 and 19. God wants to use us. Sometimes when we are working for the Lord and his service, we pray. You know, and this got me when I was writing this and I was studying this out in this particular author, put it this way. And it says, sometimes we pray, Lord, help me. But in studying this week, I believe we should, all, we should be praying, Lord, use me. Because it is not us who are doing the work <laughs> with the Lord. <laughs> Amen. But it is the Lord working in us and through us to reach someone. Amen. So we need to change that up and say, Lord, amen, that, that, that use me. It is not me doing it, but it is doing it. I'm doing it for your will. So, Lord, you use me. Not, Lord, I pray, Lord, help me. <laughs> you catch that? That hit me when I was reading and studying that, like, we all prayed it. I know I've prayed it before. Lord, I need you right now. To, I actually said it today, and then I checked myself, like, Lord, I can't be doing this. I just said today, Lord, I need your help to do your will. And then it reminded myself that, Lord, use me because I'm not doing my work, but I'm doing your work. And I need your help to get this message across because it's not my message, but it's yours. So I'm asking, Lord, work through me to be a blessing to someone else. Amen? And as we continue on, can you imagine in any large house without the needed vessels of gold, silver, or wood, or clay? Without utensils, once again, for washing and cooking, eating or drinking, such vessels are necessary. And it is the same in the church where the Lord is the master. He needs vessels to, to perform his great purposes in the church and in the world. And how he needs vessels into which he can put the treasures of his grace and love. Men and women whom he can use for spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. In 2 Kings 4, 1 and 7, we find the story of a bankrupt woman who was told by Elisha to borrow vessels from her neighbor. She did so and a miracle happened. Where she did as the man of God told her and all the vessels she received that the children went out and gathered when she began to pour oil in them, the oil never stopped until she got to the, when she ran out. And what she was able to do in the miracle was this, was that not only was she able to pay off her debt, but now she was able to live off the rest that was left to her. Because she went to the, uh, the prophet and said that, that I'm, I'm bankrupt, I have nothing left. And he said, what do you have left in your house? And she said, I have just a little bit of oil. And look how God works. How many of us are sometimes bankrupt? Amen. When I say bankrupt, bankrupt spiritually. Bankrupt where we don't have enough to continue on. Where we're ready to give up. Where we're ready to, to just throw in a towel. And then all of a sudden God says, no. You got the Holy Spirit that resides within you. The Holy Spirit has been poured out for all those who want to receive it openly according to Acts in chapter 2. And what he's saying here is that when you are depleted, let God pour his spirit into you. Let him fill you with his glory, and it won't run out. The reason it ran out, because it let the <laughs> glory to God. The reason in this particular story it ran out, because they ran out of vessels. But if you always open to be used by God, when you're always ready at a moment's notice to be used by God, when you're ready, when God wants to use you, you don't have to get hyped. You don't have to get on your knees and pray before God use you. All of a sudden, you're always open and available because you want God's spirit to pour into you at any moment, any time. You want his spirit, not your spirit, but the spirit of the most high God. And what happened? Once again, the miracle was that she was able to fill those pictures. And that's what I saw in the spirit. And that's what God wants to do in us. He wants to pour his spirit into us like never before. He wants to be able to speak to those that, 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 they, they, that they say are unlovable. 
He wants us to speak to those that they say are nothing, those that, that, that no one wants to talk to. Um, I'm reminded uh, of how um, different ones would talk about the gang members and different people that no one would talk to. But it's, it's always some man or woman that's bold enough to go share the word of God, and all of a sudden that one that they thought can't, couldn't be saved is now saved. Amen. Why? Because God poured his spirit into them. And when they went out to witness to the to that person or to that guy, that woman, that prostitute or whoever it may be, all of a sudden it's not them speaking, but it's the, what has been poured in them is now coming out. And it's, and it's winning souls. It's bringing people back to the kingdom of God. It's raising a dead. It's, it's uh, healing those that are sick. It is about his kingdom. And we want God to pour in us so that we can be ready to be used for his glory. Amen? Some, of, some are gold and silver or clay. They are all different because they are all for a different purpose. This applies in any household, and he needs all kinds of utensils in his house. And once again, the house is referencing the church. He needs Peter's. He needs Paul's. He needs men and women like you and me. He needs Matthews and Marks, amen, and Apostle Paul's and uh, Moses's. He needs all these people, amen, to use for his glory. And I and noticed I didn't mix us into that group because we're not excluded. You know, it's easy to say, yeah, he can use Peter, he can use Paul. But we need to start saying, Lord, you can use me. Lord, you can use me right where I'm at. God, I give up myself. I, I'm available to you to be used for your glory. Amen? Because God is not calling for a specific person, but God is calling for a person that is open to be used for his glory. Amen? He's, not, he's just not using um, ordinary vessels. And I love this scripture in 1 Corinthians 1, 26-30, and it reads, For ye see your calling, brethren, how that many wise after the flesh, not mighty not many mighty, not many noble are called. But for God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base, and base things of the world and things which are despised have God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. That no flesh, glory to God, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who, who of God is made unto wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. And when I was studying this once again, it says what he does, um, what he does not say is that he only uses ordinary vessels. Some are extraordinary. First Corinthians 1 26, um, once again, does not say um, not only am I going to use the wise, those that are influential, and those that are, I'm sorry, ordinary, but I'm going to use these people that are wise, these people that are influential, and these people that are noble. I'm using everybody that is willing to come to my kingdom. And what I love about that is that many people think that they got to be in a certain place to be saved by God. That they got to, uh, 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 let, let me get my life right. But God was, gave us a, a prime example of Apostle Paul and studying his life. You know, he was a hellyard. He he was killing Christians. He was hunting them down. And God wanted us to see that, look, no matter where, how far you fall, how far you get, how far you get out of my will, out of my grace, out of my mercy, no matter how far you fall, that I'm capable of renewing you. I'm capable of bringing you back and putting you back in line. You just got to be open. You know, we know the story on that Damascus Road when Paul opened up his heart. And that day, from that day forward, he then began to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what do we have? Most of the New Testament written by someone that once was a killer of those that were Christians. But when God wants to use you and you're open, he wants to use not just ordinary, but he wants to use extraordinary people. He wants to lose, use those that are influential. How many know that on Capitol Hill, if the Christians that said they are Christians would stand up and vote according to what they say in behind the scenes, our, our, our government will be better. Instead of fronting, I'm a Christian on Sunday, but I'm not a Christian during my work week. And that's something that got me that we can't just be Christians on Sunday. 
You know, it's every day of the week that we go out, that we're Christians. We're men and women of God. It's not something that we turn off and turn on. It's our lifestyle. What we pour out is what God has poured into us. So no matter where we are, what time of day, night, uh, whatever it is, God wants to use you for his glory. Don't think that you got to be, once again, influential. He will use them. He will use extra, extraordinary people. He will use people with influence. But he also will use the ordinary person to get his will across. Amen? So don't think that you got to be somebody special. And that's what I'm trying to share with the young people today. That, look, you don't have to be somebody that you see on TV. Amen? Just be you. Uh, my, my sister has a license plate, and I love my sister. And she, her license plate years ago, I actually preached a message on it because one, one time I saw it, and it says, why not you be you? That's what her license tag said. And it just blessed me because it hit me that we must be who God called us to be and not be, try to be something we're not. And that's what we have painted this picture to our young people. We have TV, we have models, we have uh, pictures of people online on TV that our kids are looking at. And they said, I must aspire to be like them. And God is saying, no, I need you to be you because you're wonderfully created. Amen. You, according to Psalms 139, amen, you're not an accident. Amen. You was put on this earth for a reason. We just read that, that we were created for his purposes. Amen. For good things in the earth. Amen. So we don't have to be like someone else, but we can be ourselves. How many know if all of us came in here with blue suits and a blue tie on today, we'd probably be looking at each other like, you know. And then next week we do the same thing. Next week we do that. Wouldn't you say at some point that, man, are, are we any different? You know what I mean? And we are. Many of us, you know, like blue, yellow, red, green, whatever the color, because God created that, us that way. He wants us to be who he created us to be. Amen? That's why he created male and female, and that's why he created us with all different levels of intelligence, different levels of understanding, different levels of, of, of who you are, who you're not supposed to be. But once the Holy Spirit get a hold of you, all of a sudden you get a revelation of who you are. And when you get that revelation, amen, you won't be like somebody else. You will be unique because you've been set apart for his glory and he has put a word in your mouth for those you come in contact with. You ask me how I know? I, when I found, got a hold of Psalms 139, it changed everything about me. It, it stopped being about, uh, you know, my dad wasn't in my life and all this and that. All of a sudden it became, I had a dad. I had someone that thought, took the time to count the hairs on my head. Not just took the time to count the heads, but he knew me in my mother's womb before I even got to my mother's womb. And it just let me know that I am somebody. No matter what walk of life I've come from, I am somebody. I'm not longer, no longer from Southeast Washington, D.C. I'm now Kenneth Jones. I realized that I am a man of God. I now understand that I was birthed in Washington, D.C. for a reason, to go through some stuff that, I, that, that, that when it's time to share with a young person, only I can share with them because I have experienced what they're going through. So when I, when I talk to someone and they said their father was in their life, I can relate. When they say that they will put out their homes, I can relate. When I can say that no friends like you, I can relate. And I, I remember when I was going to the school in, in junior high, I was going to a school where, where all the, where, where the, the rich went, and I was still going back into D.C. So I would ride the subway to bus, but yes, bus the subway all the way to the school every day. I hated it. When my mom first got me in that school, I said, Mom, why can't I go to school in the hood? She said, you will not go to that school. And I said, Mom, it's, it's the school, it's the neighborhood school. She said, no, you will not. And because she stuck to her guns, I was able to go to a school I wasn't supposed to go to, but I got more wisdom and knowledge out of going to that school than I would have got going to the school in the hood. Not only that, but it exposed me to not just my race of people, but it exposed me to others, amen? And then I found out, found out that we all was walking some of the same things. Some of them just had more money, but yet they were still having issues with dads. They were still having issues with moms. They still were having issues with, with family members dying or, or mom and dad hating them. They were having the same issues that we were experiencing, as we would say in D.C., across the bridge. So when I would go back home, my friends would laugh at me, call me, as they say back in the day, oh, you little Uncle Tom and all this other stuff. 
But now in life, once I realized, once I got saved, I understood that God had a purpose for my life. So he had to keep me away from certain people. He had to keep me away from certain things in my neighborhood because he wanted, me to, he wanted to preserve my life. So that's why he put people in my life to help me get to where I am today. Because he wants to use us for his glory. I didn't know that. I just was doing following God. I got saved, went back home, never was the same. And now later in life, some 32 years later, God just brings things to your remembrance. He's like, this man was put in your life to, to protect you. This guy was put in your life to keep you from, from going, um, selling drugs. He would tell me, uh, come take out my trash, and i give you a couple of dollars. Come do this, come do that, go to the store for me, and here's a couple of dollars. His name was Mickey. I'll never forget him and his wife. They, had, they, they were at Anacostia, and, and Anacostia it was the school I grew up in, Baloo. That was our rivals. So he would tease me like on game day, well, y'all going to lose, not just because you on the team, but because I'm Anacosta. You know, we, we're the Indians. We're going we to win, blah, blah, blah. But he was placed in my life for a reason. Many of us sitting in here right today and that will listen to this broadcast understand that God has put people in our lives to save us alive. And you say, how do I know that? When you read Genesis 50 and when it talks about how Joseph, all what he went through in his life, in a pit, sold into slavery, amen, put into jail. But one day he found out and he realized that, that, that he was in position to save much people alive. So what did he say? Like you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Glory to God. Because he was put in position to save many people alive. And we know that that carried on, amen, the, the, the uh, family and the life of the uh, Israelis, the Israelites, amen? Because he was put in position, the Jewish people, to save them and many much alive. So what am I saying? God wants to use a variety of people. And the scripture states this, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come into the unity of faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Ephesians 4, 10 and 13. And I love this scripture because all of us are not apostles. All of us are not prophets. All of us are not evangelists. All of us are not pastors and teachers. But they are put in place for this. And this is something that I think the church is missing, and we need to get back to it. We are put in position and place to bring edification to the body of Christ. What that means is to lift up each other, lift up the body of Christ. That means to, 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 to teach and to preach and encourage each other, to edify. When we see a brother or sister low, we are put in position to raise them up, bring them up. That's our goal. That's our calling. And once again, you do not have to be in a certain position to encourage a brother or sister. Just be you. And last, not lastly, but getting there, it says this. Notice the words in verse 21. It says that God, the vessels that God uses must be available. We must be ready for his part. And as I stated earlier, as I've been saying, saying quite a bit, notice the words made holy, set apart for a holy purpose or available for the Lord to use. Could that be said of any of us in here today? Could that be said of any of us who hear this message on today or viewing this message? Are we available to be used by the Lord? Have we made our lives available for the Lord to use us in his will and in his way? Are we at his disposal? In 2 Samuel 15 and 15, it reads this. This is David when he was getting ready to go off to a war, and this is what his servant said to him. And the king's servant said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord king shall appoint. Glory to God. You got to catch that in the spirit. Here these people are about to go to war, and they're telling their king that, that, look, behold, thy servants are ready, glory, to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. How many of us are ready to do whatsoever God appoints us to do? How many of us are ready and, and, and ready to do whatever he says? How many of us on the starting line ready to do what God says? 
How many of us are in that position to receive from the Holy Spirit who are we supposed to lead, who are we supposed to talk to, how are we supposed to love our wives, our husbands, our kids? How many of us are in position when God is ready to use us, we're going to say that we're ready and we're at your disposal? Glory to God. When I was reading that, I want to be ready. I don't want him to pass me by. I don't want someone else to, to, to witness to the person that I was called to witness to. Glory. I was reading this and I was feeling this that how many people when the Holy Spirit has spoken to me that I did not obey what he said to do. And he had to get someone else to come do what I was supposed to do. Because I want to be ready. From now on, ready. From now on, I don't have to get motivated. Amen. Every day is motivation. Every day we get up, it should be motivation. Every day we wake up and we give God the glory and we renew our minds for the day at hand. We're ready to go and do his bidding, not our bidding. And we don't do the bidding just in our homes or just at church. It's in the workplaces. It's in the gym. It's while you're taking a walk. It's wherever you go. Amen. God wants us to be his witness. And he wants us to be ready to be used for his glory. Glory. Once again, it says in that verse 21, we want to be useful to the, for the master. And once again, that meaning ready to be used by our Lord. Now, 2 Timothy 4 and 11, at one point it says, I'm sorry, let me read it. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me and for the ministry. And we, hear, and we remember this where Paul and Mark and all of them had separated. But here, when it came time for ministry... The man of God has renewed himself and he got himself back in a good position for his mark. And now what the apostle is saying now, apostle Paul is saying now, look, I need you to bring Mark with me, with you, when you come to me, because he is profitable for me in ministry. Glory to God. And then when I saw that and I was reading that and I've been pounding on that, how many of us want to be profitable for ministry? Glory to God. Profitable. Amen. Not a deduction. Not a less than, but profitable for the glory of God. How many of us want to be that? That when God calls on you, he can say that that's somebody, amen, that is profitable to the work. That's someone, amen, that, is, that has sold themselves out for the kingdom of God. Notice the second phrase, prepared to do any good work, meaning ready for anything. An example of this is found in Acts 8, where we find... Um, Philip, ready to preach to great crowds in Samaria in Acts chapter 5. And then in a few verses later, in verse 26, the Bible tells us, and the angel said unto, I'm sorry, and the angel of the Lord spake, spake to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that go up down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is the desert. And we know that that's where he met the uh, Egyptian man, Ethiopian man. One minute he was preaching to crowds. Next minute, God says, look, I need you to leave from the crowd and just go to one. Got to catch that. See, many are looking for the, the crowd. But we must be open to the spirit that when God says go to the one, that it ain't no questioning why are you telling me to go here or why are you telling me to go there. His spirit was open where he just went. And the Bible tells us that the spirit carried him, amen, to this Ethiopian. And the Ethiopian, what, gets saved. Not only did he get saved, he says, look, pull this carriage over right now because I want to be baptized. I, I done heard what you said. And they stopped the chariot. And not only did the man receive the good news of Christ, but also he was baptized all in one moment. But it all because a man made himself available to the Lord. Where he was once preaching the crowds, and then God called him away to minister to one. Please let us not get hooked on the crowd. Let us get hooked on the one. Because if you can win one, you can win two. Because one will get another. And before you know it, that one should get another one. And before you know it, you got 10 and got 10. And then 20 and got 20. And before you know it, it has multiplied as God instructed the disciples to do. Go to all the world, preach and teach my word to win souls to the kingdom. One can get one. One can get two. One can get three. One can get five. We know Peter got 3,000 on his first sermon. <laughs> Glory to God. 
So we don't know how God wants to use us, but we must be available for his use. Amen. But we must be clean. We can't do this dirty. We can't do this polluted. We can't do this with our own mindset. Glory to God. We would never serve someone in our home that came for dinner a dirty plate, on a dirty plate. We will make sure that plate was clean before we served it. We will make sure that that fork was washed and cleaned thoroughly as well, no germs or bacteria, but we will make sure before we serve someone with those utensils, they were clean. And that's what God is saying to us today, that before he can use us, we must be clean. And it says here, create in me a clean heart. O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Psalms 51 and 10. Renew, God, a right spirit within me. And we know that's the story of, of David when he fell, and that was his repentant scripture. But he was saying, Lord, clean me, create in me a clean heart. We don't want to go about God's business dirty, but create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us. Then it also tells us clean hands to work for him as well. He that have clean hands and a pure heart who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully, Psalms 24 and 4. Clean heart, clean hands. Now we must have clean feet to walk for him. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to the word, Psalms 119, 19. And this is one of my favorites. We must have clean lips to speak for God. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, O Lord of hosts. And we know that that scripture goes on where he asks, the the, the angel comes and put a a, a molten rock, and it actually touches his, his tongue, and it purifies him, and now he's ready to go speak the things of God. So we must have clean lips, clean hearts, clean hands, clean feet to do what God is asking us to do. We must be cleansed from everything that is contrary to his will. And I love this. We must cleanse ourselves from wrong associations, unclean habits. And one of the the greatest things that many don't realize, we cannot walk in doubt. And what I mean by walking in doubt is many people say they love Jesus, but they really don't believe in his atonement that he made for us, that one day when he comes back, that we're going to go live with him throughout eternity. They only acknowledge him as a teacher. So they kind of doubt some of the things that God can do. God wants us to walk in the spirit of faith, and that faith is in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, which we're learning on uh, Galatians chapter 3. Amen? That our faith is in Jesus, and we don't doubt what Jesus can do. Amen? All right. Lastly, if a man cleanses himself, and I love this, we are to do the cleansing. The action is ours. It's not God's. And, and you got to catch that because some people realize and waiting for God to do something, but a man, and this scripture says that if a man cleanses, his, cleanses himself and purges himself, from all these things, he shall be a vessel unto honor. It doesn't say God is going to clean him, but he says a man must purge himself. That means that, i never forget it, Overseer shared just many, many years ago when he says, you know, a smoker. He's waiting for God to do something great for him, but each day he takes a cigarette and he lights it and smokes it. And he's, each time he lights that match, he's expecting God to come blow it out. But how many know God is waiting for him to not pick it up? Amen? See, sometimes we we miss it where we try to over-spiritualize things. God is saying, look, you make the first step, and I'm going to make a step towards you. But it has to start with us wanting to be clean, wanting to be used by him, wanting our hearts clean, wanting our our minds clean, wanting our hands clean, wanting our feet clean, wanting all things possible within us clean so we can be used for his glory. But it has to start with us. If we're watching too much TV, Amen. I, like I said, I take the analogy of our overseer that he gave with the cigarette. The remote, when you turn it on, it's going to come on if you push the button. So if you're expecting it not to come on, that's wrong. That means just put it aside. 
If it means studying, reading your word, that means that you got to at least pick up the Bible. And now they make it so easy. Now you can get a scripture delivered to you every day on your phone, iPad or computer or whatever it may be. So we have no excuses for being enlightened by the word of God. So we must put ourselves in position for God to use us for his glory. Amen. Uh, 2 Corinthians 7 and 1 says this. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. And I close with this this morning. And we're probably going to be talking about this for a while. Next month, we're going to be going into to what is called the love month. And um, uh, that's why we want to meet with the leaders and um, go over some things, how we want to we want to share love. We just don't want to talk love, but we want to give love. Amen. Just like the four guys with their friend, that was a, perm, a prime example of love. They went over and beyond to get their friend to Jesus. That's how we have to be right now in the times we live in. This COVID situation is so bad right now that many are so terrified. So many don't want to do anything. I was reading a story where some gentleman had never come out of his house for over a year and came out one time. And at one time, he got the virus. But he was walking and living in fear. And what fear did gripped him and came over him because the, I know in the Bible it tells us those things that we fear the most can come and overtake us. So we must be um, ready and willing that even during the virus time to share the word of God. I'm not telling you to, 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 to even with myself to go knock, knock on doors or, or, or shake hands or anything like that. No. But when God gives us an opportunity, we must be ready, open, available to share the word of God with them. And I believe that if we do that in this coming year, not only are we going to be blessed by doing it, but God will get the glory in heaven. So I close with this thought. If a man cleanses himself, he will be an instrument for noble purposes. What does that mean? And I, I love this quote. A late writer named Guy King wrote this, that a vessel is not to be honored, but the vessel is to bring honor to the master. This is the main point today for us to leave with the thought, are we ready to be used for the Lord, to bring honor and glory unto his name and not our own? Are we ready to be used for the kingdom of God? Are you ready to be used for the kingdom of God? Amen? Amen. I know that, you know, this may not be what you call one of those shouting messages to get you all excited. But how many know that excitement comes in the fact that if we can win one soul to the kingdom, you may not be excited, but they're going to be excited in heaven. Amen. The Bible tells us that one soul, when it comes to the kingdom, amen, that they are glorifying God in the heaven of one soul. So if each one of us can just get in our heart that we, we, we're going to shout, we're going to jump off the chandeliers every now and then, but we must get the foundation of God's word. And the foundation of God's word is that he wants us to go to all the lost. Go to even those that, that we think are, don't need Christ. He wants us to go to each and one of our friends, our neighbors, our cousins, aunts, whoever it may be. He wants us to start witnessing like never before because his, his time is soon to come. Many don't think it's time. Many have, I know over the, time, over the years that you always hear that, oh, Jesus is on his way back. He's coming. Look at what's going on in the world. But how many know that each time that statement is made that we are getting closer to his return? Amen. So we must have as many people ready to go as we are ready to go. You know, we don't want to go alone. Amen. We want to take as many as possible with us to the kingdom of God. And the Bible tells us that those who win souls, you're going to receive a crown of righteousness. Amen. It's going to have jewels in it for the souls that you have won to the kingdom. Glory to God. And, and I remember years ago when I read that scripture, we did it in Sunday school. And I began to think like, man, what if I just went to heaven and that crown was just one ruby? What did I do with the rest of my time? And I'm not saying that I want to, to get more rubies and more sapphires to, to look good. But how many know that if, 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 if that would give you a, a testimony of your life? That, that when you got there, that it was not room enough for any more. <laughs> Sapphires. But we know that that's not possible with God.
because he can make things bigger, larger, smaller, wider, whatever it may be. You will be recognized for the souls that you bring to the kingdom. Amen? Not how well you sung, not how well you preached, not how well you dressed, not how much money you made, but we will be recognized first because we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, and then we're going to be judged according to, accordingly as we brought souls to the kingdom. Amen? So I'm ready. Are you ready? Amen? So, so just, I know the snowstorm coming and we got to get out of here because we want to beat the snow. But just take a moment to ask God to come into your life like never before. Just take a moment to say, God, I'm ready to be used by you. I'm ready to go do your bidding like never before. Just take a moment. Say, God, I'm available to be used for your glory. God, I'm available to go where you want me to go. Lord, I'm available to speak to who you want me to speak to. Lord, I am available to lay hands on those who you tell me to lay hands on. Lord, I am available for your glory. Not my glory, but your glory. So God, I ask you today, God, reveal to us your plan for our lives. Reveal to us who we're supposed to witness to. Bring them across our path once again. Bring them in our presence that we can lead them to the kingdom. Those whom we're supposed to witness to, to bring them into the kingdom. Bring them our way in the name of Jesus. We're ready to do your bidding, even during a pandemic. With our masks on and social distancing, we're ready to continue your work. And we're ready to carry your gospel to the ends of the earth. In Jesus' name. Oh, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to say to those who are watching this program, the Jesus I'm talking about today, if you would like to give your life over to Jesus as your personal Savior, we always take this moment to, 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 to pause the service to ask you if you would like to receive Jesus Christ, whether you're in the sanctuary or on the broadcast. And if you would like to receive salvation, and that means salvation for your soul, that means that you, have, um, you want to acknowledge Jesus as your personal Savior, you want to acknowledge him, amen, that he went to the cross, that he died for you, he was crucified for you, and that he rose again, and he defeated death for us to have eternal life. When we believe in the fact that he is the son of God, when we say what I'm getting ready to ask you to repeat after me, you will be welcomed into the kingdom of God, and your life will never be the same. I ask you to repeat this. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is your son, I believe that he died for my sin and that you raised him to life. I want to trust him as my Savior and follow him as the Lord. As Lord, From this day forward, guide my life. Help me do your will. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you repeated these words after me, I ask you to give us a call or give us um, an email and you can go to our um, uh, email address, rcfcchurch.org, rcfchurch.org. And at there, you will find a contact box. If you go there, put your information in there. We will not only reach out to you for prayer, but we will also send you information on what you have just done. You also can um, go to rcfcchurch at comcast.net. You don't have to go to it, but you can email us at rcfchurch at comcast.net. And once again, we will get you information on what just transpired in your life and let you understand and let you um, start pointing you in the direction that God wants you to go. Amen. And we would love to get you that information if you repeated that after us on today, because we believe that God wants to do great things in your life. Amen. Amen. Let us all stand.